Welcome back, everyone. I see from the chat that people were enjoying the music quite a bit during the break. Uh, hopefully, you also did some networking. Uh, we have with us Brandomir Rakic, who will be discussing semantic substrate building with decentralized knowledge graph. So, Brandomir, please take it away. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Um, yeah, hi, everybody. So, my name is Brandomir. I'm one of the founders and the CTO of Trace Labs. Uh, who are the core developers of Origin Trail. And today I'll be speaking a bit about what that means for Substrate and what particularly building with the decentralized knowledge graph means. Um, so I'll, I'll jump really quick into a bit of evolution. I think we all kind of know this, but uh, I want to restate uh, um, that uh, what, what it meant to go from the original Web 1, uh, which was about document exchange all the way to, to today, uh, so we, we kind of transitioned towards this web two, which was about web of interactions or the social web, or basically we all, we all kind of live today and we all know that social networks uh, uh, tend to use uh, and sometimes even abuse a lot of the, the, the data that we actually get to exchange over the internet. So it's no longer just document exchange, it's really about interactions. And then web three was uh, all of the stuff we're talking about here today. But actually, I would uh, like to say that it's a little bit wider than that. Web3 is actually about meaning and value exchange, or as it was originally dubbed, uh, the semantic web. So apart from, uh, obviously, uh, asset ownership, data ownership, uh, uh, identity ownership, as we've seen in a bunch of the presentations uh, prior to this one, um, it is um, about value exchange, but as much so also about meaning. And um, actually, uh, we uh, heard about this from Tim Berners-Lee himself, the inventor of the World Wide Web, who actually gave us um, a technological stack for it. So he invented this layered structure of the semantic web, or what he called Web3, 20 years ago, uh, with some probably very familiar components, such as URIs, uh, cryptography, obviously, but also some very interesting ones which are targeted towards uh, semantics and meaning, such as ontologies, query languages like Sparkle, uh, data interchange formats. And then finally, on top, like as, as the icing on the cake, he sort of put a layer of proof and trust, right? And um, although he was very visionary at the time when he was making this, uh, we well, we didn't have what we have in the Web3 today. So all of the the trust uh, protocols that that all we're all building together, um, and uh, what we would actually uh, like to argue that it was that he he got it right. Uh, we just have much better tools and a better idea of what Web three looks today, like today. Uh, but basically, if we talk about this trust. Um, I'm not going to explain what blockchains are. Trust me, everybody. I'm sure everybody knows on this <laughs> on this event what blockchains are. But I want to emphasize in one sentence that they are trust networks. And uh, basically that means we have decentralized stateful protocols um, compared to, for example, HTTP, which is stateless. So we have stateful protocols where we share verifiable state somehow among us. And then we are able to build on top of that, including applications, all kinds of uh, smart contracts and, and goodies that we've seen over the, the course of this event. But just as blockchains are trust networks, Knowledge graphs are semantic networks. And that means basically that we're not no longer talking about strings, we're talking about things. And in that sense, we're moving from this notion of raw data to actually highly structured knowledge. Um, and companies such as Facebook, Google, eBay, Amazon, all of these Web2 giants have been using these technologies, knowledge graphs or KGs, to extract value from their platform's data. Um, it's um, it's basically the data structure that is the core of their business. Uh, Amazon uses it for recommendations. Uh, Google uses it for search, uh, also to learn how to improve its own search. Basically, all on, on this layer of semantic uh, machine-readable and machine-understandable data. So, all right. Um, at Origin Trail, what we really are doing is we're building the world's first decentralized knowledge graph. So what does Origin Trail then do? Well, basically it's organizing humanity's most important assets, making them discoverable, verifiable, and valuable. And in a sense, 
it's the decentralized semantic layer, which is synergizing knowledge graphs and blockchains, merging the value propositions of, of the, the two. Um, actually, today, Origin Trail is already uh, a live network for several years. It's a permissionless network. It's completely open and open source, and it's run by over 2,000 uh, different participants uh, or people running nodes um, around the world by the Origin Trail community. And um, essentially, the way Origin Trail works is that it connects to multiple blockchains. So it, it's by itself, it's a decentralized knowledge graph. It's not a blockchain. And currently, it actually uh, interoperates with Ethereum, XDAI, and Polygon blockchains. Uh, soon, hopefully, as well uh, with, with Polkadot, on which we've been working for quite some time, uh, both through the Substrate Builders program, but also through our own uh, internal projects. Now, the point here is that the decentralized knowledge graph provides this layer of sem semantics, uh, which together with all of these blockchains that it uh, interoperates with, enables the utilization of uh, the power of knowledge graphs in Web3 applications. Um, now, going a little bit into more details, what this means is that we, we have uh, highly structured, machine understandable, verifiable data. And um, essentially, this decentralized knowledge graph represents an interlinked collection of verifiable assertions or claims, which are based on URIs or DITs. For those of you familiar with DITs, you will also you know that those are interoperable. But for those of you who are not, DITs are basically the decentralized version of identifiers that are formally actually defined by, by uh, W3C and uh, the semantic web community. Um, and essentially they enable uh, identity ownership. But also apart from this, the, the, the whole point of this knowledge graph, uh, uh, actual interconnectivity of data is semantic representation. So the ability to represent information in a highly structured way as graphs. And that comes down to really focusing on creating something called data triples, meaning subject, predicate, object relations or subject uh, property object as some people call it, where essentially you're able to um, explain, or let's say, or describe any sort of interaction. You could, for example, say um, that subject myself, Branimir, is um, uh, giving a presentation, which is an object. And through this very flexible system of triples, you're able to basically generate graphs of anything. Um, now, in these triples, you use these identifiers, which are DIDs or URIs, to actually make uh, make sure that uh, you refer to the uh, same entities. And this enables data integration and actually vast growth of data around a similar uh, asset or object. Um, all right. I think I lost. Oh, no, I didn't. All right. Uh, all of this is tied in together with verifiable credentials. So. Uh, which, which is another W3C uh, recommendation, essentially enabling uh, verifiability of, of these claims. Uh, and for the decentralized knowledge graph, that is uh, actually done on the level of, uh, of the graph. Um, but basically, that means we have a global asset knowledge graph, which essentially has a decentralized public index, which is used for discoverability. So think of what was Web2 Google index, which where Google goes around and scrapes the whole internet and somehow indexes this information so it's easier for us to, um, to use it for search. Um, that is uh, the decentralized public index. Uh, th that is the function in a way of what the decentralized public index does in the decentralized knowledge graph. Um, also private data graphs. So not all data is public. The ability to actually connect private uh, privately held graphs into the same knowledge graph is one of the key properties of the decentralized knowledge graph, so, uh, which actually quite a few enterprises are using, uh, yet again still uh, getting the verifiability and discoverability features that, that they need. And uh, obviously having cryptographic proofs then available on chain. So the data in the graph itself is in the decentralized knowledge graph network. Uh, however, the proofs are available on these chains and uh, with these proofs, you can do quite a few interesting things. For example, verify that a certain timestamp data set has had a certain form or piece of that data set, or more precisely, information about a certain entity or asset. Uh, and that could be verifiable directly into a smart contract because these uh, actually Merkle tree proofs are available. Um, 
And then finally, graph services, which are the one of the, the coolest things around, which enable all kinds of great things from things like Google PageRank, which uh, is quite an old, old uh, I believe, known thing, but also all kinds of NLP and even going into uh, ML-like uh, things where uh, the, the actual uh, base of this is, is all in the graph and highly structured. So basically, we have knowledge graph queries with blockchain powers. So what can we do? Well, we can query the network for asset graphs. That means we can resolve by did, or we can search for by keywords. For example, a certain asset like an NFT uh, could uh, have associated tags, and you would be able to search it by by these tags um, or identifiers or uh, any type of interesting values. But also just generally shoot any fully fledged queries. Uh, think of your old school select uh, star from something in SQL or GraphQL queries, and actually GraphQL and Sparkle are what is coming up in the next version of Origin Trail. And uh, with this, uh, we're able to query um, any single asset in the graph uh, in several different ways, but the last fully-fledged query one actually enables uh, all kinds of various, uh, um, um, basically, extractions of knowledge from this knowledge graph. Um, so. What uh, actually we uh, are able to also get here, apart from the queries, is, is to get asset integrity proofs, uh, verify this in off-chain or on-chain, but also in the off-chain module, which I'll present a little bit uh, today and uh, let you know that uh, where you can see it. Um, and if you look on the right, you'll actually see a very uh, simplified, uh, basically, interface where uh, through the, the what we call the DKG client, you're able to publish and query the decentralized knowledge graph uh, either throughout the whole network or actually query for a history or what we call the trail of a specific object, uh, hence origin trail. Um, so, all right, uh, let me load this uh, already. So essentially what uh, we have built so far for Substrate and which is available for all Substrate chains is a very new DKG Decentralized knowledge graph off-chain worker palette, which can be used by any Kusama or Polkadot uh, chain uh, to query for assets or to publish assets data to the decentralized knowledge graph, uh, and then being able to use it in uh, the other direction. So to query it in the ways I just described for verifiable assertion graphs, meaning data and proofs, and then uh, doing one of two very wide uh, concepts. One is actually process all this, verify this um, uh, query result, and um, uh, propose and, and do some action off-chain in the actual off-chain worker palette, uh, or and then submit the result in a transaction in extrinsic to the runtime, or actually go ahead from the get-go and submit it in the runtime and verify it in the contract um, and, and and actually execute some logic based uh, based on that. Uh, we actually have the first version of the DKG off-chain worker palette available on GitHub. Uh, I'll show the link very soon, so you can go check it out. Uh, but just to give a bit more context what um, uh, this could be, for example, uh, the, the previous presentation where we heard Engine talking about NFTs, think of uh, the Engine uh, or Engine-like chain querying for uh, asset uh, or NFT information that is highly structured in the graph um, on, uh, hosted on the decentralized knowledge graph, or uh, Akala um, applications uh, who actually submit uh, either this information to the graph and index it in that way so that it's easily usable and discoverable, and vice versa, ingest information uh, in, a, in a, an Oracle-like fashion uh, from the decentralized knowledge graph. Um, so, um, how am I on time? I have about 10 minutes, right? With questions. Okay. Um, so moving forward, the DKG off-chain worker palette, what it basically does, it implements the support for the decentralized knowledge graph API, and it is prototyped with the origin trail parachain implementation, which we've been actually working on for, for quite some time. Um, it is actually an EVM compatible parachain, so we're also working on that uh, compatibility. There's also a Rust crate available uh, that is completely separate, but also um, highly uh, usable. And in the coming roadmap, what we are working on is, as mentioned, compatibility with the EVM palette. 
um, provisioning verifiable credential graphs directly from substrate-based chains. So basically any uh, anybody running uh, Kusama or Polkadot pair chains would be able to uh, provision these highly structured graphs and take the load off the chain while still remain verifiable, highly structured information um, uh, available to it. And uh, obvious um, next step is really data marketplace support. So we've been working on a bunch of these protocols so far, uh, one of which is actually uh, uh, obviously fully decentralized implementation of something called FairSwap, which is uh, the ability, to, uh, which gives you the ability to trade data for tokens. Well, in this way, the, uh, what we get unlocked further is the set of uh, knowledge tools which are there to enable knowledge marketplaces and these queries to be payable. Um, uh, and in that sense, uh, getting the ability to both um, uh, monetize available data as well as to synergize or actually crowdsource new data based on the queries in the graph, uh, much like uh, Google is using the query analysis that also is available through the centralized knowledge graph. Finally, a lot of this comes together with support for Origin 12 v6. So we're entering version 6 uh, this year, and we're very excited to be releasing that, including uh, the Sparkle GraphQL and other supported uh, new goodies coming. But anyhow, not to stop too much there. Um, basically, you can just go ahead to our GitHub. You can check it out. You can uh, um, find the code for the off-chain worker palette, and you can give it a go and test yourself uh, and if you'd like to um, get any assistance or, or have any questions, feel free to approach us either in uh, Sub-Zero chat or uh, our own Discord at Origin Trail, uh, which, which is, has quite a vibrant Origin Trail community and uh, a lot of node runners around. So there will be definitely people to support you. Um, so what can you do with Origin Trail? Zooming out a little bit. Um, you can build with semantic, high quality, verifiable data, as explained previously. You can also publish verifiable claims um, as, um, as a publish, as, as much as any other data knowledge graph publishing uh, is happening, but in a centralized way. What is really powerful is then we get the ability to integrate data easily across the Web3 and seamlessly, especially in Web3 where sometimes um, there's a bunch of shared identifiers around. So identifiers such as uh, cryptographic hashes, uh, the ability to integrate this is, is uh, one of the core um, capabilities of any knowledge graph, and especially the decentralized knowledge graph. Then easily build privacy-first metaverse-ready apps, uh, the ability to discover and crowdsource high-quality data sets, as I said. Uh, so basically think of the capability to look for something very highly structured and meaningful for, for your particular use case, you'll be able to actually ask the community to crowdsource that. And then uh, finally, tokenizing the, the dynamic assets, tokenizing these asset graphs, which are uh, in themselves uh, attached to the assets that uh, they are describing in this semantic way. Um, now, the, the core concept here is that Origin Trail actually operates on the network effect. So the graph synergizes data and actually makes this even more valuable. So inf as information is inherently valuable, connected information is actually more valuable. So the decentralized knowledge graph unlocks this Metcalf's law of network effects. Um, and um, the, the, the network effects meaning that uh, we can actually discover this, we can verify all of this data, and we can assess the value uh, of all of these represented assets. And um, if you haven't heard of Metcalf's law, this on the right, you can see it. It's actually, it says that the value of a network is proportional to the square of the number of participants in the network, which has actually been proven many times ever since the inception of Ethernet, which was created by uh, Bob Metcalf, who uh, the, the law is named after and who is, by the way, one of our advisors, but also uh, other networks such as social networks, Facebook growth, you can correlate basically the growth of uh, the number of users in Facebook with uh, literally the, this uh, this function, uh, which is very uh, proportional to the growth of their revenue, um, and many other many other proofs. Uh, not to go too much into Metcalf's law, what we uh, aim here is to 
uh, um, harness the network effects on the data level. So integrating all of this and using it in the way Google, Facebook, Amazon, and all these big Web2 companies have managed to use it or sometimes even abuse it. Um, I also want to uh, add a, a small quote there for the co-founder co of Intel, Robert Noyce, who actually says that knowledge is power, but knowledge shared is power, power multiplied. And that is exactly how we see the network effects on in knowledge graphs. Um, Origin Trail is already being actually used in quite a lot of places, including uh, the British Standards Institution, Swiss Railway Company, the uh, SCAN uh, Association, which uh, encompasses the biggest global biggest retailers such as Walmart, Target, Home Depot. We have a lot of uh, interesting material on if you're interested in seeing how they use it. Um, and this is, both, by the way, all production use cases. So Origin Trail has been proven quite a lot. And um, there's also quite a lot of support by organizations such as Walmart. We got their Food Safety and Collaboration Center Award. British Standards Institution is um, where their exclusive partner for blockchain technologies. Oracle and the World Economic Forum have also been supporters of, of Origin Trail and actually World Economic Forum helping a crowdsourcing, a data crowdsourcing campaign for trusted COVID uh, essential supplies during the pandemic. Um, Anyhow, it's not just for organizations. This technology is, like I said, again, open source permissionless. It is it gives the power of uh, Web2 giants that have knowledge graphs to the decentralized world, and anybody can use it uh, as long as uh, they're, they're uh, able to um, uh, basically uh, have uh, the value from the data that uh, uh, the vast Web3 is actually uh, co constantly growing and cultivating. Um, with that, um, I'd like to finish um, and uh, invite you on uh, to, to join us on this journey of going really from this Web 2 to the semantic Web 3 uh, and adding more knowledge into our systems, into uh, moving from, from strings to things, adding them value uh, and making them discoverable, verifiable, finally valuable um thank you very much and yeah for more information feel free to ping me anywhere twitter discord uh and visit our website thank you all right thank you very much Branimir. we actually have yeah quite a few questions we're not going to have time to get through all of them um uh, but i do want to uh go through a few um so uh first off uh one person had asked about uh, when Sparkle support will be added. I think you said in V6, but was was there a time, a date or approximate date given? Or did I miss that? Yeah, so I didn't mention it, but the, the aim is to release the uh, 6.0 version of Origin Trail by latest by the end of this year, and that will contain Sparkle support from the get-go. So hope that that, that satisfies the uh, audience. <laughs> Yeah, um, and if not, I guess they can reach out to you as as you already mentioned. Um, Absolutely, we had a yeah we had another question about uh, the the data storage capacity. Like as the uh, distributed uh, graph grows, like uh, what what has been like the, the the size of the data? Like how how fast has this been growing? Yeah, that's a very good question. So uh, perhaps before just jumping into the size, uh, a little bit about how data is managed. So just so a lot of people ask us and think that the centralized knowledge graph operates the same as a blockchain and then kind of replicates all the data all over the place at the same time, it's much more akin to, uh, let's say, um, IPFS in that sense, but as well is content distributes uh, according to content address around the network and then replicates it with the fairly large replication factor, and in that sense, uh, saves a lot on, on capacity. So we don't necessarily have the same constraints as in blockchain. And uh, the graph has been growing quite significantly in the last year. Uh, what we use for the metric, uh, though, is not necessarily data, which is quite big, um, but uh, it's actually something we call total graph size, which aims to um, uh, measure the amount of knowledge in the graph. So not just raw data, not just, let's say, kilograms, but rather how many connected entities we have in the graph. And the total graph size actually counts all of the entities and all of their connections together. And if I'm not mistaken, it's close to 70 million right now, which is uh, quite large for, for such, let's say, a young uh, knowledge graph. Um, 
and yeah, it's it's growing steadily. I think it's uh, uh, during this year we should see um, around 100 plus million uh, uh, entities basically in the graph. Wow, quite impressive. Well, thank you very much, Branimir. Uh, as I mentioned, there were quite a few questions I couldn't get to, uh, so I'm sure yeah, uh, you have your work cut out for you answering them. Uh, thank so you very thank much. You again. Yeah, and for, and, feel free to shoot any questions in the Discord. I'll be around. Okay. And uh, yeah, thank you. And please uh, uh, just hold on for a few moments while we prepare the next speaker.